Okay, for today we're going to try and do another VESTA tutorial for drawing crystal structures. And what we're going to try and reproduce is the image that you see here. This is an apatite crystal structure, and you can see that they've gone to lengths to show that there's a large channel and a small channel. This comes from one of the papers that I wrote when I was a grad student, entitled Thermal Conductivity of Gadolinium Calcium Silicate Apatites, Effect of Different Point Defect Types. Right? And for us, it was important because we were talking about these different cation sites. The A2 site, that's this blue one. The A1 site, that's this orange one. And the oxygen sites, as well as the silicate groups. It was important for us to differentiate the impact that these different sites were having on conductivity. So a nice figure helped us do that, and this is what we ended up with. So how do you end up with a figure like this? How do you go about creating it? Well, if you've seen my Vesta's videos before, you know that the first thing you want to do is figure out the sieve file, right? So the space group for this I know is P63, right? That's the space group we're looking for for this crystal structure. So let's go ahead and do a search for this using the crystallographic open database. If you've got the Pearson database or ICSD or anything else, great. Um, those are all paid versions. So let's start with the free one for those that don't have it. We're going to punch in gadolinium, calcium, silicon, oxygen, and search for formulas that have at least four distinct elements and no more than four. That's going to pull up only things that fit that formula. It's not going to tell us the ratio of the elements, but it has to have those four things in it. Okay, and a moment later we get the result. It says there are no files that match your search criteria. So are you out of luck? If you haven't paid for the uh, online repositories for other civ files, are you out of luck? No, you can try other things, right? So let's go back to our search. This time, we know that gadolinium is a rare earth. It's very possible that this is going to be isostructural with other rare earths. So let's go ahead and plug in lanthanum, calcium, silicon, oxygen. And sure enough, we get some candidates that hit. Now, again, these will have different lattice parameters. You changed an ion. They might have different site occupancies. But we're still going to be able to make this figure pretty accurately. So let's go ahead and grab this. Remember, we wanted the P63-M space group. So we're going to grab that one, download the sieve file, and we'll open it up in Vesta. Now, depending on which version of Vesta you have, immediately when you open it, it's going to create bonds, right? You can change these by hitting Control B, or you can find it in the Edit Bonds selection. And you'll remember one of the first things we noticed in the other image is that we only had the silicon oxide bonds showing, and those were in sort of isolated polyhedral units. So we can go ahead and get rid of our bonds from lanthanum to oxygen. We're just going to delete that for now. It's not that they don't exist. Obviously, these are bonded, but that's not helping us in the image that we're trying to show, which shows these channels. Those sort of get in the way. So we're going to just leave them out. All right? So then we've got silicon bonded to oxygen, and sure enough, there they are. There's our silicon bonded to oxygens. We're going to hit polyhedral view. And we're going to change those to make those look like the polyhedral here later on. First, let's fix the other problem. First off, this is lanthanum, and it's not gadolinium. So let's change that. We're going to go to edit. We're going to go to edit data. We're going to go to structure parameters, right? Here, you see the first four entries are the cations we care about. Lanthanum, calcium, lanthanum, calcium. And they're spread over two sites. You've got site number one and site number two. Those are the same ones that I've got labeled here, A1 and A2. So A1 in this one that we pulled the SIF card for, it has a shared occupancy. The calcium and the lanthanum are sharing that site. But in our image, we want to show that it's the rare earth that dominates that site. So we're going to remove this one entirely. We're going to do the same thing for the two site, but now we're going to remove the lanthanum site. We're going to change these occupancies to reflect now 100% occupancy for both of those two sites. And then we're going to change it from lanthanum to gadolinium. So we're going to go over here and select gadolinium and change the label to gadolinium 1. We could call it A1 and A2. It doesn't matter. That's just a label. Okay. Now it's starting to look a little more like it. But we're still a pretty far cry from what we were looking for. So how do we change this? Well, let's start with the color. This gadolinium is the wrong color. So we go to our properties down here. In our properties, we're going to go to atoms. And you can select different colors you want for each of these things. Well, the oxygen and the calcium look fine. We're going to change silicon later. But for gadolinium, let's change its color to something orange so it matches what we had. Right? So now we've got orange, we've got blue for calcium, we've got red for oxygen. It's looking better. So the other thing is, it seems like there's some missing atoms, right? There's these three there, but I'm not seeing three here, right? 
There's three there. I'm not seeing three. So what's going on here? What's going on is that um, here we're actually searching just outside of the unit cell. For example, this guy must be slightly to the right and actually in the unit cell next to it, right? Just like this one is. It's slightly to the right, and that's why it's showing up. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend our search and our boundaries. Instead of going from 0 to 1 in all these directions, let's go from 0 to 1.1. .1. Oops. Let's try that for now. Better, it's still missing some, let's go negative. In fact, let's go from negative one to 1.1 1 .1 in all of these. Let's look right down the c-axis to clean it up a little bit, and it's getting better, right? This is starting to look more like the crystal structure that we have, right? It's starting to look more like this one. You see that this is now a ring, and here's our same ring, right? So let's make it look a little bit more like it by changing the polyhedra. So we're going to go to Properties. This time, instead of selecting Add and Change the Color of an Individual Atom, we're going to go to Polyhedra, and you can change to different polyhedra types, right? The difference between these is subtle, but you'll notice the bonds are showing up in the middle of the polyhedra here, but they're not in there. The one here just has lines, right? So let's actually select this one, where you can't see the atom on the inside at all. We're also going to change some of the colors here. Let's make the outside a nice gray, and then put colored lines on it. So for the colored line, I think we did a purple. Let's select one of these purples. Maybe make it a thicker line, like a three or something. Um, how's that looking? It's looking pretty close to it. We could change that purple if it's too bright to something else. You know, this is all easy to change. In any case, once you're happy with that, we're getting a whole lot closer to this. The next step would be to see why like this red atom is showing up there. Why is that showing up, right? When I look down the c-axis in our drawing, those aren't there, right? They're only at the edge centers here, right? What we've done is we're not bonding to that. We're looking along that front face. So if we were to go only to the zero in that C direction, we'd get rid of it. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. We're going to go to our boundary. And instead of going from negative 1 to 1.1, 1 .1, let's try just going to 1. And that's going to get rid of those. Let's again look down the C axis. Yeah, it's looking a little bit better now. You see the small ring that we wanted to show. Here's the other one, the smaller one. So this is looking pretty close to this channel, uh, channeled image in figure A. I think we're actually just about done with that one, okay? Now, the orange circle and the blue circle were something that I put on it afterwards in Illustrator. What about this image, though, where it's sort of off-axis and it shows that? Well, let's start by just tilting it a little bit. How many do they show? They want three of these. We've got four of those showing. That's pretty close. So how do you then get rid of the other things, right? These other things that get deleted. Once you have it more or less correctly here, you're going to go to your Select tool, and this allows you to highlight and delete, right? You can just grab the things that you don't want showing. In this case, it's all of these that we don't want showing in this instance. You highlight and just select Delete. It's now looking pretty close. Actually, it looks like I kept those silicates around it. No problem. We can just hit escape. We click on this, hit escape, and it brings everything back, and that gives us a chance to try it again. So let's go ahead and do that again. Delete these. We deleted those. So let's grab them, hit delete. And I'm going to keep the polyhedra this time that surround it just to reproduce that figure. Okay. And there we go. We've got it looking just like it is before. So we can go ahead and zoom in on this now. We can move it around if it's not in the right spot. But that's looking pretty much like the one that we're trying to reproduce. Again, if there's extra of these that you're not wanting to show, we can get rid of them. Let's go back to our Rotate tool and see where they're showing up at. Oh, it's because we've got two unit cells. If we do just one unit cell, that should get rid of those. So we'll go to Boundary.
Okay, and there you have it. You've successfully recreated this in exactly the same way. Of course, when you're ready to export these, you can always go to File and Export Raster or Vector Image, depending on what you want to do with it later on. If you're going to send it into Illustrator to recreate these, you can actually do a Vector and then it will be scalable. But sometimes your shadowing effects will get broken. I find that Illustrator doesn't do a great job. So I think in this one, I probably export it as a Raster Image and then just did the Vector Circle right on top of it. And that's how you draw this crystal structure in Vesta.